My name is Amalia Saar. I'm a cultural anthropologist. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Haifa. I'm also the director of a research center called the Center for the Research on Peace Education. And I'm an activist, uh, feminist activist and peace activist in Haifa. And Roli Rosen, would you like to introduce? My, my name is Roli Rosen. Uh, I'm here in the university. I just finished my master thesis in anthropology, in urban anthropology with Amalia. And I also coordinate the Haifa Shared Pre City Project in Shatil. And the thesis was about Haifa as a shared city or as a multicultural city and also about the festival of uh, the holiday of holidays. What do you want? So let me ask you, Roli, um, <clears throat> you have been looking at the holiday of holidays with uh, two simultaneous perspectives. One is that you are an activist and you're involved in the project of Haifa as a shared city. And another is that you've been researching it as an ethnographer. And uh, in your work, you uh, point, out, point out some of the paradoxes that come up in the holiday. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about that? <clears throat> okay, I think that Haifa as a whole is um, all the time moving between the wish to be um, like the ideology, the Zionist ideology of the state, that Israel is a Jewish state, and so Haifa also possibly should be a Jewish city. And the fact that on the ground the situation is not, Haifa is not only a Jewish city, and so it is definitely not the utopian, the Zionist utopia. Uh, but a lot of things are happening on the ground, and there is also, Haifa has a background of a cosmo cosmopolitan city, of a city with multicultural, and there is a constant movement between these two. And I was trying to look about how this paradox or how this tension is managed between the... And it seems that in the last few years, and uh, the, the holiday of holidays uh, shows this, um, there also with globalization and economic needs, uh, the, what before was a kind of disturbance, the Arab nature of the city, the history, the architecture. You mean from the Zionist perspective? Yes, yes. We, which was in 1948, the old, I think you know, all the old city in Haifa was absolutely destroyed with bulldozers, completely run down, because it was seen as a disturbance. But then, uh, it started being seen as something that could bring tourists, that could be an attraction. And this is where the holiday of holidays comes in, because suddenly this uh, oriental architecture, the fact that people are saying the multiculturalism becomes an attraction, it can bring tourists, it can bring money. So this is where things started to change. Uh, but in a critical view, you can say that it is a kind of a show that the, the municipality is dealing, is making a show of coexistence. Our mayor likes to talk about Haifa as a model of coexistence, but the daily life, uh, there is no equality. It is not really, sometimes Wadi Nisnas, the area where it is taking place, is being used as a stage to show uh, as if there is coexistence, but in fact, there is a lot of discrimination in the services in Wadi Nisnas itself which is a very run-down area where people live in poverty. And the question is, what are they gaining from this holiday of holidays? And I think they are getting some things, but it is also, I mean, it's very paradoxical, it's complex. So why don't you give us an example of I think um, I, I can share a moment uh, last year. Uh, there was uh, in, in the Ben Gurion, uh, Boulevard, which is a very symbolic place just by its name, the Ben Gurion Boulevard, it cannot be more symbolic. And, sudden, and you stand there and suddenly you see a parade of Palestinians wearing uniform, khaki uniform with uh, drums yes. going da dam, da dam, da dam. And it's a very powerful presence of Palestinians in the city, which you think, how, what is happening? How, how can this be? Um, there is a song in, in Israel, it says, our, our parade will drum, we are here. And it's about the Holocaust survivors. And suddenly you see the Palestinians, we are drumming, we are here in such... And you think, that doesn't make sense. And I think that the explanation is because it brings money, because it is also part of Christian culture, which is seen as not threatening, 
because it's part of the, it was part of the celebration of Christmas. So if it's like it's a little bit like America, like in the West, and the Jews want to celebrate it a little bit, or you know, like they see on TV, and suddenly they can have it in their city. So this is another explanation, and so it becomes a meeting place where space is shared, but not in an equal position. What we observe when we observe the holiday of holidays is um, a, something that we can say unintended consequences. The reasons why this holiday is being celebrated may be cynical. The municipality wishing to <coughs> show itself as multicultural, whereas citizens know that it's not really so, uh, and so on and so forth. But what happens on the ground is a bundle of paradoxes uh, that uh, yields uh, many interesting things. So all you were talking about ex ex implicit expressions of Palestinian nationalism under the guise of uh, apolitical multiculturalism. But this is only part of the story. The story is that ethnically diverse cities like Haifa, uh, <coughs> they have multiple options in each point in time. It could, it seems they always can go down the slippery slope of uh, conflicts like it happens. It happens sometimes in different cities. Or it can become this utopian place of togetherness and uh, multiculturalism. And we, we never know how it's going to go. And part of the things that happen in this celebration is that there's an outlet for a little bit of everything. There's an, uh, you, in your work, mm. you show how it's primarily about consumption. People go out to have a good time. And they, they want to make believe that it's a cosmopolitan city, and it's like Europe with Christmas and so on and so forth. But at the same time, they, they, the authorities are constantly on the guard not to, not to let it become too Christian, too Arab, too what have you. Uh, whereas uh, in the practical reality, um, the multiple aspects of identities just spring out and they're not explicitly named. And I think that not naming is key here. Mm -hmm. you, you, when identities are named, it's in the demonstration. You, in your work, you write also about the demonstration model where instances in the city life where two opposing camps stand on two opposing sides of the street, street and, and yell at each other. This, this is one type of highlight, but we have the highlight of the daily routine or the holiday of holidays, which is mostly where identities are not explicitly named. And so people maneuver between a sense of clearly distinct identities, which can also become shared identities, which is, which is the reality of uh, multi-ethnic uh, urban spaces. And I think that um, if we try to analyze that and think how we m should manage a situation like that to be sustainable, not to become explosive or on the one hand, or completely purist, as it were, on the other hand, where the Palestinians just, just vanish, then maybe uh, we, cho we should just allow more of these unnamed occurrences to take to role, to mm -hmm. take a uh, place. Um. I think, first of all, we, we can see who doesn't go. The religious people, the Jewish religious people, don't come. First of all, because it's on Shabbat and it's on the weekend, and they cannot. Uh, maybe they can walk, but I don't think they would be interested, because um, they, if their practice is very much about keeping the border and not doing practices that belong to the other, then they, they do not want to be involved. So that's a one whole group which doesn't appear there. I think also um, on the Palestinian, on the Arab side, uh, a lot of people feel that it is not dignified, that it is um, putting, put, using them as a kind of exotics, like you go to the, you know, you go to Africa to see, or you go to the zoo, you know, you go to see the uh, nice Arabs and they don't want to play a part in that. So a lot of 
while I was exploring it and going there every weekend, my Arab friends would say, well, you know, what? <laughs> we don't go there. So this is another group. So those are, and also I think Ethiopians, you don't see many. You can, there are a number of groups that you can name that do not come. I think from what I saw, a lot of people from the Russian community do come, especially last year when there was this kind of Christmas celebration and they suddenly felt that they could um, show their children, they could participate in something that is familiar to them. And I think a lot about it is about, again, like Amalia said, consumerism. And in a way, it is presenting um, one way of critical way of looking at it is saying that it is presenting the Arabs, which are usually seen as threatening, as consumer object. Uh, they are nice, they give food, they are... So it makes it very unthreatening and familiar because it's Christian. So it's a way of um, bringing down the defenses in a way. Um, so I think this is how we should try to understand that this is a process that is happening there. And in some ways it's working, and in others people can say, you know, they will say, okay, so we went to Wadi Nisnas and had a nice time and ate good falafel, but still the Arabs are, you know, I wouldn't want them or that we have to be careful. It doesn't really build down all the stereotypes. And so you, we, it has its benefits, but also, you know, its limitations. And okay. maybe if we can dwell a little longer on the consumerism, it's the new liberal moment. And it's not just the holiday of all holidays. We see lots of aspects of social life being channeled to the space of the sphere of consumption. And uh, this in a paradoxical way appearing to appease Co uh, mm -hmm. antagonistic identities and, and fractions in society without solving them. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, an important aspect about sus sustainability is letting go of the modernistic utopia of solving antagonism. Rather, we're trying to understand that antagonism is here to stay just like multi-ethnicity is here to stay and diversity is here to stay. It is political, but it's not just political. Because most of the time, people, even political people, they just want to have good time, a <laughs> good mm -hmm. time. And if there's a celebration, they can enjoy the celebration, then they may go because they happen to have small children and they need to entertain them, because they happen to have visitors from out of time and they want to entertain mm -hmm. them, or there's just a sunny Saturday day in the, in the winter and they want to go out. It, this doesn't mean that people are not at the same time politically critical or suspicious or a, a bit pessimistic, but there's something about the occurrence of neoliberal moment and consumption that, uh, again, creates unpredictable outcomes. I, I think it is also important in the sense that it does change the identity of the city. I grew up here in the 1960s, and at that time, I n vaguely knew that there are some Arabs downtown, but I never met them. They were not a pre meaningful presence. Whereas my daughter, she wants to go to Chag Chagim. She likes it. She says, when, when are we going? She wants Santa Claus. And sometimes it's even a bit, um, I think, you know, she says, are we celebrating Christmas? Are we celebrating Christmas? Why? Um, it can maybe a little bit blur the identities. I have answers. But I think that the fact that it is clear that there are other people living in this city who celebrate Christmas, and it is now presence, and you go and you see the trees, and. It makes something that I feel is important, again, with my critical view. I think that there are things that are really important. I also think that the, it's uh, wrong to see all the uh, Arabs as victims and as people who are being used for it. I think that it also opens many opportunities that they can use it. Like Amalia says, it, can, it opens things that are not always expected. So I don't see it as an imperialistic. Uh, I think the space is, is shared in different ways. But it's not only one way to see it is to say the Jews are coming to Wadi Nisnas and they make it into a Jewish space of consumerism. They are imperialistic, they are using it. But I think it, it should be seen in various ways, and this is not the only way. And they also, they are not only victims, they play a part, they, act, they are active in it, some of them. Others are not willing to do so, but I think uh, it has many, many ways of looking at it. It's not only 
one way. And I think if we can add a, a, a challenging a, a appeal to the municipality, maybe it's high time that the holiday of holidays moved up uphill. Mm -hmm. Right? Instead of being in Wadi Nisnas, being in the, in the um, uh, neighborhoods uh, on, on top of the mountain, which are predominantly Jewish, even though Arabs live there, but there's no institutionalized presence for the Arabs of the town. Mm -hmm. There's no churches or mosques, but still Arabs or schools mm -hmm. have moved there, maybe make the presence there more legitimate, but also uh, starting to bring the holiday of holidays mm -hmm. uphill. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know that my Arab friends are saying, you know, we, we are expected to invite you to Wadi Nisnat to celebrate with us, but we have never been invited to celebrate to Merkaz, to the center of Carmel, yes. to celebrate exactly. Hanukkah with you. So it should be more mutual. Exactly. And that yeah. is something that is okay, yeah. possibly to develop. Yeah.